Hello everyone, today I've got a video about transducers. Um, I've had a lot of fun playing with and learning about the PicoScope hardware, much like this WPS 500, and some of the in-cylinder testing, vacuum testing, all the different things that you can do with that. Because this kit is almost $1,000, I know for some of us, that, that's a bit hard to swallow early on to get into. And so what I'm gonna work with today is this idea of taking a really cheap pressure transducer. Um, I bought these off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. I wanna say they were less than $20 to get a two pack. And it's a 500 PSI transducer. You can buy different levels. They've got a 100, a 500, but a cheap way to get into maybe doing some pressure transducer testing. So um, I first learned about this idea from a presentation of some of the good faculty at Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. So credit to them for the origination of the idea. But we're gonna talk through how I set this up. Works on a five volt reference we'll hook it up to our pico we'll see what it looks like on our in-cylinder compression waveform we'll compare that to the wps see what we get so first let's talk about some of the attributes of these pressure transducers so they're a steel bodied they're labeled 500 psi they come with this three pin connector with a pigtail three wires coming out of that and so the transducer itself has a eighth inch mpt style fitting on it and so I've adapted this one just to one of my quick release fittings from a fuel pressure test kit so that I could mock up this funny kind of piece in order to put a leakage tester on it. My thinking for this process was here's a tool that I can calibrate air pressure to pretty easily. So I could set this to 100 PSI and then I could look at my scope and see what is the voltage readout at 100 PSI. And so uh, hopefully that was a way for me to get a baseline for calibration. The other setup that I did to get this thing to work is that of these three wires, pretty basic. I've got a red and a black for my power and ground. This is supposed to operate on a five volt scale. And so one of the easy places for us to get five volts is to go to our USB port on our laptop. So I took a old phone charge cable, cut the end off, and then I put it together in here. I've got it all shrink wrapped together. But what I did was put the five volt and ground from my USB connector to my black and my red on that three wires, on the two of the three wires at the pigtail. I doubled up the blue connection here is connected to the black ground. So I've got a reference for my scope. And then my red lead is tied to the green wire, which is my signal wire. And so to get this to work, I'm gonna plug in my ground. I'm using my Pico scope here so that I can get a reading. And I'm gonna plug this into the USB on my laptop. You should probably be careful with the USB source. If I was being extra careful, a wall USB charger would probably be the safest way to do this so that I don't accidentally ground these wires together and hurt something within the laptop. So here I've got my transducer plugged in. I've got my leakage tester set to 100 PSI, and I'm running at about 1.2 volts of output. And so this is my baseline uh, for me to know what 100 PSI is like, and so we can use that information as we go to the car. All right, so I got my setup completed here, and so I'll show you where everything's hooked up at. I've got a pressure transducer tied just to a generic sort of compression testing hose. There it is plumbed together right there. I've got then that is hooked up to channel A on my PicoScope. I'm getting power from my USB on my laptop. And so we'll go ahead and crank it and we'll see what we get. So here we'll zoom in a little bit. Looks like we got some readings. I left my ruler on from where we calibrated to 100 PSI. And so it looks like on the first pulse I hit 100, and then I climbed up again and again. Interestingly, this looks very much like an analog gauge compression test. I've got just kind of my peaks as I go through. I'm realizing now that probably my mistake is that I've got a Schrader valve in there, and that's going to keep pressure building as we go through multiple pulses. So we'll take that out and try it again. So I didn't account for the need of airflow through all the different cycles. I don't want that airflow to stay and that pressure to build within this hose. So you can hear that pressure bleeding off. So 
first waveform looked a lot like an analog gauge. That's not what we want. We want to see more. So trader valves coming out. We'll try it again. All right. So we could tell off the bat from my experience with the WPS, the Pico transducer, we're definitely lacking some resolution, right? You can tell there's a difference. Um, but once I switch this channel to 16 bits to get a little bit better resolution, we do see some definition in the different occurrences and different parts of the four stroke process. All right, so I've got my WPS transducer set up um, on cylinder one with that, cylinder three still with our homemade one. And so we'll come back to the software, change my B channel and add the WPS on range one, go to a 200 PSI scale. We'll go ahead and take the rotational wrap away. We'll leave that marker, the ruler for 100 PSI. Put it live and we'll go ahead and crank it. And then we'll try to do some work to make these match um, to some degree. And so I can do some work to scale my A channel, basically to zoom it. If we can get those to match somewhat close. So here, if we zoom in and we look at two events, they're actually very, very close. So this particular engine, um, it's pretty common for us on a cranking compression test to not have a lot of information on the exhaust and intake events. Uh, there's just not a lot of clarity at that cranking speed. If we switch this to a running compression test, we generally will get more information out of that. And so I think that's where we'll head next. But otherwise, really interesting to look at very, very comparable waveforms. So far, not so bad. So we'll get set up now for a running compression test. I'm gonna get all the injectors except for cylinder one plugged in. We'll get a capture of the WPS first and then we'll go on to the other. So here's my running compression with the WPS. So this is the PicoScope box. And I've got a great compression tower. I've got my exhaust event going into my intake valve opening and then going through that sequence again. So next we're gonna switch over and go back to our homemade transducer and we'll see what we get with that. All right, so we got the, the homemade transducers hooked back up. I've got all that set. I've got to go back to my software and switch over. All right, so all things being equal, we'll go ahead and pause this and take a look. I did not change my scale um, box that we just looked at, so the, the snapshot of the screen is the same. And you'll notice that there is basically the same information here, but clearly the refresh rate or sample rate of this transducer just cannot keep up with this level of time. So going through an actual running compression test, it seems to be lagging um, and unable to keep up. We do still have my waveform tower here and here. Those are pretty consistent. I've got my little exhaust event here, intake valve, I go back through it. So there we go, fun experiment. Um, interesting outcome. Not terribly surprised at the refresh rate on this thing, being as cheap as it is, doesn't keep up with the PicoScope box. Um, obviously, get what you pay for, a lot of detail, um, good transducer in there. So, still a fun experiment, fun to see what happens. I think that there is some use for these transducers. If I wanted to scope and measure a different pressure that wasn't as dynamic as, say, running compression like this, you know, I could measure fuel pressure, transline pressure, I could do a handful of other things that don't need that same quick response, and I think this would be a great application for that. Uh, so. Check out the notes below. Go buy yourself a transducer, do some experiments, share them with me. Thanks, everybody.